Okay, welcome everybody and thank you for coming. And first of all, I want to thank Aperture for publishing my work and for the great uh, opportunity to show my work here in this exhibition. And especially I want to thank you, you Denise Wolf and also Leslie Martin. Okay, so. Uh, I have worked with this project since 97, so it's about 12, 14 years <laughs> already. And I've traveled almost every year for two or three months to do field work in the, in the rainforest. And I've worked recently in these scientific stations where also the sci scientists do their field work. And I choose to work in, in the scientific stations because I wanted to, as an artist, I wanted to step into a new territory and I wanted to create some interaction between art and science. Uh, this image is called Private Collection. This is an, an insect trap in the forest at night. The title Private Collection, it, it refers to, to collecting, which is kind of essential part of my work, because I have uh, adopted some working methods as well as like um, methods of representation from, from science, from the natural sciences. And uh, when it's private collection, it's, it's, it tells something about the personality of the collector as well as about the uh, obsessions and passi passions of the collector. This work is called Diversity. It's, uh, it's part of this series of photographs that depict like um, views from the scientific stations. They are often a kind of odd looking views. You don't know what is going on on there there is some sort of experiment running and the marks of the scientists are visible but but it's kind of you question like what what is going on uh, in some of these there is a very strongly a documentary approach like in this one so it was actual study by uh, by the biology students. They were collecting these branches uh, from the transect, from, the, from a study line, and, and at night time they try to analyze what species are there. Uh, but it was very frustrating to them because they, they said that only thing that they can learn from doing this study is, is the fact that there is so many species in the rainforest and, and that is already something that they know. So that's how I name this diversity. This is called Shade House. It's also study in a kind of limit in a limited area where the forest is supposed to stay outside and, and the study is happening under this this roof. But when you look more carefully to the plants, you can see that they are eaten by insects and, and all that. And then when I was walking in the forest near the scientific stations, the scientific stations are often in, in protected areas or, or next to national parks or, or the forest is like a larger, it's larger area. But near, near to the scientific stations, I discovered that it's really a scientific forest. Because when I, once when I was making a landscape picture, a little bit like this, and I was working there for a long time and taking Polaroids and everything, and, but then when I look again from the uh, Polaroid, I, I saw that there was flagging tape in the, in the landscape. So 
when you are, are in these scientific stations and you look at the forest, you see markings of the, of the scientists everywhere. <laughs> And this is called field studies transect. And this series is called frog studies. Um, when I was in this station in, in Costa Rica, the station is called La Selva, there was no frog researcher working there at the time. So I, I thought about taking taking the role of frog, frog researcher myself. And I wanted to create these this objective looking images um, that the viewer would trust, trust to the fact that th there is frog research going on. This was frog that I found dead in the forest and then I put it to formaldehyde and then there are these tadpoles on the little container. And this is a juvenile frog of the same species. So for me this series is it's a study about the visualization of science and, and the objectivity of, of a photograph. This is Moracea, it's a, it's a ficus. This is called B studies. There is, it's also actual study by, uh, that is done by, the, by, by one researcher. Uh, when you look at the image more carefully, you see that there is uh, Legos on the, on the table. So the, the whole experiment is actually controlled by these technical Legos. There is a Lego robot <coughs> that gives nectar to the artificial flower that you see on the table. And when the bees enter to the, um, to the flower, the video camera starts to film. Mm, for me, these uh, images are, are kind of, you don't need to know what is the study, but for me, it's more, it looks like a, it could be installation done by artists. It could be installation done by me. It's just how, how absurd it looks in a way. And, um, and, and you just kind of wonder <laughs> what is going on. This is 65 bats. There are, in these bags, there are one bat in each. And they were collected at, at night from the forest with mist nets. And this is morning. And they are going to be measured. And, and uh, the species are going, going to be looked at. And, and here, there are this nail polish the red nail polish on the on the table and it was actually used for the bat nails to to see if the same individual would be captured again the following nights this is called field studies one this is a leaf litter collector but uh, it has been in the forest for a long time because some some uh, little trees are already growing there. So seeds were falling in and they are growing there. This is called untitled self-portrait. This was one of the first images where I, where I am myself, kind of with my work and with showing the, the setting, how it is. This was my field studio box in the year 2000 and uh, I have used this uh, small like hand flashlights to to lit these images these still life images that are taken in the in the field studio box the box itself is acrylic and it can be put 
together with screws and and all that and in the beginning uh, the the curtains for example that you see here all around in the box they had just practical meaning because they were creating a uh, shadow to the to the object but then uh, afterwards i i changed the these still lives to be in a way that the whole setting and the curtains and all the screws and the duct tape and all these my my markings are there in the in the images. This is from Friends Guyana. This is Bat Studies. For me this is kind of researchers table in the same way than, than you see in these uh, 16th and 17th century paintings, in the still lifes paintings, you, you often see how the, the scientific tables or, or how they are portrayed. Uh, this is Field Studies 2. These were just some containers that were hanging from the canopy. This is flight tent. This uh, this flight tent was used to to keep bats bats inside for a, for a certain period. And when I have been working in the scientific stations, I I kind of uh, I I talk with the scientists and I I also kind of interfere their projects. So I, I ask them if I can join them if they go to the forest and and if they go to mist net bats or birds at night or early in the morning I, I ask if I can join them and this is how I st I started to photograph b bats and birds but the later images that you see in the exhibition the the animals are 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 caught just for my my purpose so I. I have kept the bats in the similar shade house like this and like given them food every day and changed the, the nectar that they were feeding on and and all that. So I had to lo learn how to handle the bats and also how to handle the hummingbirds. And this is dark forest one. Then I had this um, idea that when the when the forest becomes dark, when the when the shades are just some blacks and greys, it the forest kind of ref reflects the opposite perception to the scientific in a way that you you can't collect information anymore when the when the darkness comes. You can't measure things, and you are more dependent on the sensory perceptions and and kind of more w how you how you feel it in your skin and so that's how these these landscapes this was the idea for the for making those landscapes and then I think there is some i'm on, on the other hand, I'm very fascinated by the by the science and and how science explains the world. And I have been always interested about biology and natural history and all that. But then there is this other side in me. I kind of want to see the the forest more in a romantic way, or or more as something that we quite cannot reach or we cannot explain. So that these images also tell about that. And then there is a um, quotation from Albert Camus.
His work is called Zona Antisismica. And here, here I am photographing the leaf cutter ants that are just walking across the, the floor of the scientific station. This is called Close Observer. Uh, here I am standing in a, in a stream and uh, I found these giant aracia plants and uh, this image kind of plays with the scale because the, the plants, they look so similar to the ones that we have in our home, in, a, in our homes, in a, in a pot by the window, but they are just gigantic, so it makes kind of uh, humorous feeling to the, <laughs> to the image. This is called abandoned study. There are some wiring on the forest. I, I found the, the wiring next to one of those uh, shade houses used by the researchers. And then I placed the wires again to the forest floor and it gets kind of tangled with the, with the, the organic growth of the plants and, and all that. So it's abandoned study. So it's a study that is not, no longer serving its original function, but it's, it kind of, it's a study that fell into decay and it's, in a way, it's uh, mocking the exactitude of science. In some of these images, I have been thinking about aspects like, like chaos and reason, how they, how they twist and how they can work side by side. This is called On Forest Floor. This is my hand holding a false coral snake. This is called monkey bones. This, these are the bones of a howler monkey that I found from the storage room of the scientific station and then uh, together what Together with one professor, we glue the teeth back into the skull and, and then I take it back to the forest for, for making this image. This is called night pollination. I have covered the, the plant, the Amaryllidacea plant, during the daytime so that insects could not um, enter it. So I would see what is pollinating it at night, but at night I didn't see many, <laughs> nothing coming. <laughs> uh, this is transient rain. Many people have been puzzled by this image because they, they think there is some sort of reflection or something in there, but they are just water drops in the air and it's it's lit with, with flashlights, so it, it looks kind of uh, very cl clear. Uh, this is called spider. Then I have this series of, st of still lives uh, that are taken in this, this field studio box. Th this has been ongoing series for, for 10 years. I had the studio with me in the very first trip and, and I have used it ever since. It's kind of working method for me. I like the fact how the how the white background refers to scientific documentation and also to to these uh, natural history drawings or cabinets of curiosities and it's sort of laboratory for me or it's a 
stage where the play is changing and I'm the director of the play. It's also um, very good in a way that sometimes, especially when there is rainy season, it, it can rain the whole day, it can rain for two weeks or three weeks. So I can always work, I can always go to the forest to collect plants and animals and I can bring them back to the, to the scientific station where I have this studio, this stu studio setting and after I have photographed the plants and animals, or like the, <laughs> the animals, I return them to the, to the same place where I found them. There is a small wiper there in the Hericonia flower. This is Tangara larvata. Uh, this bird I was, I had always, I have often some idea how the image should be I have placed the, here the branch there and I was thinking the bird should be sitting on the branch but it was very stubborn bird <laughs> so it only stays in the back so so finally uh, I when I look at the the negatives afterwards I I decided that this shows better the personality of the the bird in the in the situation where I put it this is Passiflora vitifolia. Some of these uh, flowers and also the, the mushrooms, they, they wilt quickly. So if I find something from the forest, I, I have to go back quite uh, quickly to photograph. These are some stick insects. There is a female and a male. This is a mushroom. Uh, this is an armadillo. A snake in bromelia. Often the snakes are posing very nicely when you, you, you when you place them to a to a flower or to a plant. This is also a, a wiper, and often I I catch the, the venomous snakes with some container or or with a plastic bag, but then I had a trouble there how to remove the plastic bag. So I, I actually couldn't remove it uh, entirely <laughs> because the, the snake looks like it's attacki attacking me. <laughs> so it, it creates nice balance in the image. And then some of these are samples of the of the scientists like this one and this one. Uh, first I was interested about the hummingbirds but then soon after came the other the flying subjects like the bats and especially nectar feeding bats. The nectar feeding bats are, are feeding on the, on the nectar and, and the pollen of the flowers. And these are also done in a, in a studio setting. And here I, I created this um, bromelia flower that has never ending uh, nectar so this this tube is going to the flower and it, it gives always more nectar to the flower so 
so the bat can visit the same flower again and again. And here I like the the contrast between the with between the clamp and kind of the scientific tools and the softness of the fur of the bat and the softness of the flower. These are ecoacoustic flowers. I think of them like a like very specialized flowers, very intelligent flowers that have these these structures that only the, the nectar feeding bats can find them in the forest in a complete darkness. They have during the course of evolution they have created these structures that reflect the the echolocation sounds of the bats. And also to me they look like some sort of baroque chandeliers or or something like this. Uh, then I created this kind of uh, feeding tube where the bat can drink straight from the air. So uh, I could photograph the, the tongues of the bats because it's so funny how extremely long tongues they have. And this is one of the setups I, I made. So there on the right side there is the, the nectar bottle and the and the tubes and and in the table there is the reflector it's it's the reflecting there is um how do you call this this infrared beam. So every time when the bats come to the infrared beam the camera takes automatically pictures. And then there are, this is called tree death. I, there was this long term study in the, in the biological station in, in Costa Rica where I have been staying a lot. And it's a, it's a study about the fo photosynthesis and how the photosynthesis is shutting down because of, of the climate change. So these, these two images depict uh, huge trees that are fallen down because of the global warming. And then finally the, the hummingbird series. I like how the, the motion studies are so, so sculptural and I felt when I was photographing these birds that are that they are like objects that are rotating in a in a space and with photography I can kind of nail them to the to the air. And I also liked the fact how the the bird is challenging the framing and the, the speed of the, the photograph. And I had hundreds and hundreds of pictures and and the more I look at them, I, I start to like these frames where the, the bird is cutting out. Okay. So we were originally going to look at a few specific images. I think um, mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and call those up. You can just do it like you should. But um, you also spoke so much about so many of these that I think I'll just ask you more generally about some of the, the concepts and ideas behind these, these images. So now you've been working on this for a really long time and in a way 
you know, anyone who's had a chance to see the exhibition has seen how much it's evolved. And there's almost like several different sub-series in there. Um, some are like this image, which are truly documentary. It's actually a found mm -hmm. scene. Uh, others are like this, which are almost entirely constructed with mm -hmm. a um, sort of a superficial narrative. And when you talk through the images, you go back and forth between some of the concept, but also you, you give us a lot of specifics about the actual science that's happening there. Mm. So looking at your body of work as a whole, what is it that you're trying to say about science by mixing this perception of reality with, with, um, with these created narratives that you're putting together? Mm. Uh, for me, these these two kind of images where I have kind of staged things for for photographic purpose or or the images that have more directly the kind of um, documentary approach, I don't see so big difference there because for me uh, it's kind of in in the images as well where the where there is this documentary approach it's it's my thinking kind of becomes clear um, in a way that i i don't have to stage something but it's already there and and i also feel that it's it's something that somebody else would just they would not recognize it because they don't have the same questions in mind that that I had. So in a sense it's not important whether or not it's whether or not the image is real. It's more what people can learn about mm. scientific process and observation. And what is it that you're trying to get people to think about with regards to observation and how we understand the world around us through science? Uh, I think for me it looks so kind of limited what 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 we can learn and how we can collect information of the of the rainforest because there is such abundance of species and and we we still don't know the the mechanisms and we don't know the how that sort of diversity was developed in the first place and also i think scientific truths they they have they have a tendency to change during the the history so um, and what is your what is your background with science are you come from a science background no i don't have any any science background <laughs> i but I have always been interested about biology and, and natural history. Like and how long do you spend in the forest with the scientists? It's always two or three months at a time, so I can really kind of follow the, their work. And you mentioned being involved in some of their processes too. When you were creating some of these images, um, assume that's a f informed by the time you also spend with them helping them with their projects or following them around? Yes, yes, sure. There is, it becomes really everyday life in the scientific stations that it becomes like a routine how the day, how the days go. It's not so exciting like people would think. So, you associate a lot with people and and people are also working a lot so if you want to talk with them you you go and you help them with with their work or you go together to the forest at night or or something if if they work off trail and further away from the station i'm i'm also interested to go because it's uh, it's um, better than going alone sometimes. <laughs> Even mostly I go alone. <laughs> yeah. And so when you're making an image like, like these frog, frog images, how important is the accuracy for you? Are, you? are you actually trying to communicate some scientific things or is it more that you want to mix the accurate with 
your own interpretation for some effect. I think my work studies like how we approach nature in art and in science. It's not about the, the species themselves. I don't claim to to make research on any of the of the species, but of course the photograph always have the documentary value. Like you can definitely recognize the species and you can clearly see all the details and and all that. So you're not trying to trick people. You're just trying to get them to. By mixing, by mixing the approaches, you're sort of trying to get them to, to question what science, mm -hmm. what science offers and how we interact with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with these, um, at times there are there some of these include more of the uh, the stands and the curtains and things like that. What is wh Talk a little bit about your choices to include the setup as opposed to some of the earlier images that didn't include as much of the setup? Uh, I thought that the interpretation of the images was just too open if it was cropped in a way that there, there is just white and the bird. It could be any kind of image for any kind of purpose for, I don't know, for advertising or for fashion or for anything. So I really wanted to focus more to what I am interested about. That is kind of the, the scientific documentation and also the cabinets of curiosities and, and also the 16th and 17th century still life paintings and all, all those traditions. Yeah, it's very much like the sort of like the field guides, but then you're also giving, again, you're giving process behind it. Mm. Um, so let's see. OK, we're actually missing an image. But I was going to go to, well, this one will work. Um, so in this image, or in the image that you showed where you were observing the ants, um, mm. you're actually becoming a character in this. Is this a situation where? you're documenting your process or are you actually um, thinking of constructing narratives that sort of encourage the viewer to think certain ways about? Uh, often, often the ideas come from actual work or from a actual working situations. So in here, for example, I was doing, I was working several nights with this light trap and, and then I decided to, to make this image finally. And also the the ants, this zona antisismica image. I was taking close-ups of the ants some years before, and then when I saw the ants again, kind of entering to to the scientific station to this human territory. So I wanted to to kind of reconstruct the the situation and and make the image so so they are kind of partly true and partly just fiction. And so this I know is one of the older images, but some of the ones that include you as a character are some of your newer images. Is this a direction you're going, or do you see um, sort of the variety of images that we see out there in the gallery? Is that always in sort of a necessary structure of the project? I think I always had the different stages and perspectives and different viewpoints because I, I feel that I can approach any kind of subject or any kind of species or I'm a kind of renaissance person. I, I try to create the view like a, like a view of the forest that is wider than, than, the, than the ones that scientists have. It also seems like it sort of reinforces your desire to show people different perspectives on mm. on both scientific process and the way we observe the world, but also how you're interacting with it, too. And it's also, I feel that I always find something new that I really interests me. So I might go to some really odd subjects, like the bats, because I 
I like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bats and the birds, which are similar, but almost but very different images, too. Mm, they are like the, the black and white, the negative. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. How are we doing on time? Should we do some questions from, yeah. from people? Okay. I have a question. Well, and conceptually, you're mixing the work. You know, you're, you're mixing, again, real documentary with some process stuff and some stuff that you're even making up. Um, does the work actually mix? I mean, are you sometimes helping the scientists or sometimes are, they, are you making photographs that they ever use? Are you, do you, does it get conflated like that? Um, I haven't actually made almost any work for the, for the scientists. Only the, only the bat researchers have mm. found my images useful <laughs> in some extent. But, yeah. <laughs> but that's interesting that if, if out of a project like this, you mm. know, real legitimate images, mm -hmm. or, you, know, you know, legitimate research mm. images can come. She she I asked if um, she said you you were she was asking if if all of your work is related to science and and some of these sort of environmental biology questions. Yeah, I think all is is related to science, but I think there are other levels to look at the images as well. Like you might have some other ideas when you when you look at them. So are you doing this work to address issues? I mean, a tropical forest is a, you know, a huge issue in, in you know, globalization, environmentalism, and things mm -hmm. like that right now. Is that part of your work, or are you trying to address, are you trying to address concerns like that, or, or not? No, no, not really, because I think I leave, it, I leave that to, to other people who are other organizations and like WWF people can do it better than, than me. And, uh, so you're really focused on mm. the scientific process and exploring what it's that only, means? It's only those images of the, of the tree death. I made, I made them for a specific um, exhibition that dealt with uh, climate change. Mm -hmm. Was that, was that, did you have a follow-up to that, or was that just, did you have a follow-up question to that, or was that just? Uh, it's just a question, basically, um, if, uh, hopefully, but I just wanted to know what your the core of the work was, like, what, it, what ideas you have in terms to, um, to picture, like, what's the motive behind this work? Mm -hmm. I think it's my fascination to... <laughs> to the rainforest and to the animals and plants and, and all that. Yeah, and scientific process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sir, you in the front had a question? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you come, from what I understand, you're primarily in this rainforest as a uh, artist, as a photographer, mm -hmm. with an interest in biology, as opposed to being a scientist with the, the graph and the measurement or what have you. But also I noticed do do some measurements of the, there was a picture with a frog and a uh, some kind of measuring device. The mm. picture that fascinated me was one of the snakes. Uh, the red and the black one is uh, a non-poisonous snake. Mm -hmm. It looks uh, you know ominous some way. But the other snake looked like a viper. It has a, a wider kind of jawbone. Did you mm. have any uncomfortability in handling the animals? It you look like you're so natural with Yeah, I'm I'm kind of uh, <laughs> skillful to grab almost anything. Um, with the wipers, I I had somebody to to watch me over. I had some somebody to help me, and actually the wiper went off to the floor from the flower, so we had to pick it up again with a long stick and put it back. But normally the wipers are really calm. But um, it's it's always you see some snake images here that that are good. 
<laughs> but there are there has been so many that that were never successful. <laughs> so sometimes the snake just slips away and uh, and doesn't stay there on its place. The one thing that I found interesting when we were walking around earlier <clears throat> is she, a lot of these images are actually coming, they're, they're sort of both constructed but also literal examples of, of her own process. So this is representative of what a scientific process might look like. It's also documenting her own process that she needs to go through to collect a bunch of the materials to make the images. And then it's also consciously a constructed photograph. You know, it's staged to the extent that she has walked into it and made it with the intention of creating a, a, a narrative that's not purely documentary. So it's not even a self-portrait in that sense. And I think that, that gets at part of what you're asking, that there's this constant sort of mix in the work that goes, mm -hmm. um, that challenges the viewer to think about, you know, what does a photograph mean? What is, um, you know, how do we, how do we see purely scientific photographs and what might actually go into making those purely scientific photographs that would change the way we see things? So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm back. Yes, I'm quite perfectionist in, in that way that I try to make the prints look like natural and all that. And uh, of course it's difficult to get the tones of the wings of the hummingbirds and, and the, the reflections in the, in the throat. And Um, <laughs> maybe thousands, mm. because I have been also using this uh, with hummingbirds and with bats. I have been using this uh, infrared beam, so that that took a lot of pictures. It was always like a full card of eight megabytes <laughs> when I went in and checked. And it was not some system that was working perfectly, so so there was lots of images to, to select from and I do not feel related to that. It's because I I come from the art background and and it's so different world to me. Any other question there? Uh, it's closed. The boxes <laughs> is closed. So it's similar box to the ones that you see there, there but it has kind of um, extension, like a transparent net, and it's a small space where they can fly, and there is the feeder so that the bird can feed, and then there is some porch that the bird can rest. Uh, sometimes I have photoshopped uh, more white around, so I have my, I have, might have changed the, the the framing, and also with the bat images, I when the bats were drinking from the test tube, I tried to photograph as near as possible 
and then I add the additional black there so that I could have um, kind of better quality. Does anyone else have any other questions? Yeah, Jamie? Yeah. Those I have borrowed from the scientific station and also the the insect lights, for example, that have the the different kind of wavelength to attract the insects. Basically I I I can use any kind of tools I can find. I can try to make them work for me. <laughs> Uh, the the one bat, bat researcher I've worked with, he has used them and he he developed the first set for me, and then I had somebody else, like an engineer, who did one for me. Yeah, and if you think about it, I mean, s science and photography have been linked since they very first started. Right. I mean, right, right as soon as photography came into existence, science was using it as a tool. And so um, it's sort of an interesting synthesis to come back and mm. sort of explore photography's role within science from a, from a different perspective, you know, from more sort of self-reflective perspectives. Per perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Did the scientists also take their own photographs? Did they have cameras there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Did they photograph you working a lot? Were they totally, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that who is this strange be. lady? <laughs> good project for them. Yeah. I, in the, in the scientific stations nowadays, there is the internet connections and all this, so <laughs> they put their pictures to the messenger <laughs> at night and send them to the yeah. colleagues. And that gets really meta if they're photographing you, photographing their process, and you're making it up. Yeah. So. yeah. Mm. I tried, I have tried to photograph other people as well than myself, but but somehow, I I don't know, <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> and it's also easiest to, to use myself, because um, I don't have to bo bother them, or I'm always available <laughs> for <laughs> myself, and... and and some of the images are really, they have been really difficult to, to execute. Like for the, for the private collection, I think I, I woke up like five or, s five or six nights and I went there and it started to rain and, and there was no insects because there was too much moonlight or, or then the other, image where this close observer where I am under these aracia plants in the stream it was so remote location that I would need somebody else to have the whole day just for me so that we could make that picture because there was uh, all the heavy equipment and, and, and uh, several streams that we had to cross and, and all that yeah, that's ask, asking for a lot of resources sometimes, maybe, from, from these resource, re research centers. How are you connecting with them? What is your process? Uh, how, are you, how are you finding the research groups that you're going to work with, and how are you approaching them? I basically uh, just find the stations, and then I kind of write about my project to the scientific director or to the director of the of the station and 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 that's how I enter there I don't necessarily know what scientists or what projects there are going on when I go there
Anything else? Mm. Thank you. It was great. Thank See you. you. Thanks.